Hey there, puzzlers. My name is Fleb, and today I want to put together a few of the techniques that I've been showing off in some of the logic puzzle videos. A number of the videos lately have been about loop puzzles, like Masu, Cave, and Slitherlink. And what I wanted to do is show you how some of those techniques can bleed over from one puzzle to the other. This puzzle here is from the 2009 US Puzzle Championship, and it's called Wolves and Sheep and Fences. It was designed by Dave Toller. It's very similar to a slither link. You're drawing a single closed loop, and the numbers in the squares indicate how many loop segments are around that square. But you may also notice that there's S's and W's in the grid. The S's represent sheep, which need to be inside the loop, and the W's represent wolves, which need to be outside of the loop. The additional constraint means that we have to use ideas from things like the cave puzzle video, where we talked about checkerboard patterns and having the outer parts of loops escape different regions. If you haven't seen those two videos, I highly recommend it, because I'm going to be using those techniques to solve this puzzle today. They're linked in the description below, and there's also a link to where you can find this puzzle. Okay, without further ado, let's get started here. So, uh, first we're going to agree on some notation. I'm going to use a circle to represent outside the loop, and I'm going to shade the inside of the loop. And that just makes it a little bit easier to see, I think, on the camera than a notation that I would actually use for speed solving. When you're looking at a grid like this for the first time and you're wondering how to break in, a good place to look are where you have clusters of clues. So, for example, down here in the lower right-hand corner, we have some wolves and some sheep next to each other. So let's shade that in, and those wolves are on the outside. Now, whenever we have an inside part of a loop next to an outside part of the loop, we know we have to have a line between it. That line is what divides the inner loop from the outer loop. And note that just like a cave puzzle, we can't have checkerboard patterns. So that needs to be outside the loop as well. This sheep needs to be inside the loop. And since it's on the edge, it means that we have to fill in this edge here and this edge there. Otherwise, it would be outside the loop. Here, the inner part and the outer part are next to each other. And now we can't close off the loop here, so we can put an X there. Whenever we have an X, we know we have a line that does not divide the two parts. So this can't be outside the loop, or that would have to be filled in. So, it's inside the loop. That's filled in. Those two are different. This two is also inside the loop by the same logic. Okay, well that seems to be what we can do over there, so let's take a look at a different region. Here we have a three next to a sheep and a wolf over here. Let's fill in the sheep and the wolf, and then think about how that three can go. Can the three go like this, with the two line segments here? Well, it can't really do that, because if it did, this would have to be both inside the loop by this edge, and outside the loop by this edge. So the three has to actually go the other way. And we don't know where that third segment goes yet. But we do know we have two X's here. We can't have line segments there. So these must be outside the loop as well. Once we know this is outside the loop, by this line, this must be inside the loop. And we now know it goes like this. It's a checkerboard pattern here. So that must be outside the loop. This is inside, so there has to be a line there. From the Slither Link video, one of the patterns that we saw is that threes in the corner have to have their lines like this. That means it's inside the loop. This is outside the loop here, and now let's take a look at this region. This region here is inside the loop currently. It needs to connect to other regions elsewhere in the puzzle, so it has to be able to reach it somehow. It can't go this way, it can't go through those two walls, so it must come out through here. That means that we can actually shade these squares here. We know these have to be inside the loop so that that inner part can reach the other part of the puzzle. That gives us some lines on the border here, which fills this one, and allows us to shade in a few more things. Now we can draw on the line separating out the outer part of the loop from the inner, avoid the checkerboard pattern, and fill in the border. That completes the three, and that region. From here, we're going to use some more of our Slitherlink rules. We have a line coming into a three. 
So these two lines must be filled in here. That means these lines cannot go here. Outside and outside. This needs to be inside. Can this connect through here? Well, if it did, this would be inside the loop. Anytime you have an outside part and an edge, you know you can't have a line segment there. That completes this three. And now we have to worry about closing off this loop too early. We know we have a lot of other line segments out here, so these can't connect here. That's inside. This is inside. This is inside. And this is outside because it's a wolf, which means we need to have a line here. That means we can't have lines here, so this is inside, and that's inside. That completes the two, so this must be inside the loop. These are inside as well. And you may notice something here, that now we have a wolf inside of this region that needs to escape to the outer part. That was something we saw in the cave puzzle. It's still true here. If this wasn't able to escape, we'd have two closed loops. So this must be outside and outside. That gives us a few more lines. From here we don't know whether that's going to be going up or down to try to escape to the edge. But we can think a little bit more about this one. This one can't connect down here, so it must go to one of those two line segments there. That tells us the three, and with the wolf that's here, that tells us that one is shaded. So we know it has to go that way. That means this square is shaded here. This is shaded here. This three is now filled. This is all just slithered link logic that I covered on the previous video. This is inside the loop. This is outside the loop. And this must be outside the loop, because it's aligned away from something that's inside the loop. Which tells us how that three goes. But I want to come back to this outer wolf that was in here. We didn't know before whether it was going up or down, but now that we know that one is shaded, it must come down here. That line goes in to separate the outer part from the inner part. That fills the one. It gets us a lot more of the puzzle. And this is outer, inner, 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 outer. Let's do a little bit of cleanup on this region. This two needs to be filled here. If you look at this three, there's only one way it can actually go. Uh, one way to see that is just to do case-by-case -case analysis. If it were to go like that, for instance, that two would have too many line segments, so you know you have to have the bottom segment. If it were to go all the way to the right, that two could not escape. That tells us this is outside the loop here. And that fills in the rest of the three and the two there. This outer wolf here still needs to escape. So we still have to actually bring it out of its region here. But to figure out where it goes from there, we're going to have to look some more at what's happening up here at the shading. So this is shaded here to prevent a checkerboard pattern, which brings the line in there. Now we know those two lines on the three. And that completes the three and shows us exactly where that line goes. And that completes that region. So all we have left is to kind of go up here to the right, and then we're going to push off to the left a little bit, I think. We'll see. This three has to come out like this. This is now outside the loop. This is outside the loop to prevent the checkerboard pattern there. This is inside to prevent the checkerboard pattern here. 
This one can't go in here because it would have to come back out there. That means those X's are there and this is actually shaded. This two is complete because we need a line between the inner and the outer part. We know from the slither link video that this has to be inside the loop because of those two line segments there, which tells us exactly how it goes. Now this segment here is either going to go down or left, so these two cannot be filled in, meaning that it's inside the loop. This is inside the loop with that line segment there. These two squares are now also inside the loop. This line segment has to be there to make the border, as this square is inside the loop. That gives us these two squares, which means the 3 is outside the loop. The 2 is inside the loop. The sheep is inside the loop. This must also be inside the loop because this 2 is filled. That completes this 2 and tells us many more squares that are outside the loop. That completes this 2 which shows us this two is inside the loop. Now there's only one edge left for this one. And we have another situation where an outside wolf is trying to escape. The only way it can do so is like that. This is shade that went the checkerboard pattern. Here we have a similar situation to the one before where the one can go left or up, but either way these two can't be filled in. That means this has to be outside the loop because we can't have a borderline. And the one must go to the left. We know this three is inside the loop. And this line has to go here to prevent inner from outer loop. The last piece of logic has to do with the fact that we have a three in a corner and a one here. And that means that these two line segments here cannot be filled. Because what if they were? If one of those two were filled, these two would not be filled. In order for the three to be complete, it would have to have another line segment there, and then would have nowhere to go. With those two X's there, we know this is inside and inside. These two X's here means that the line segment cannot be there, so this is outside. And that completes the puzzle. So what this puzzle was doing was using a combination of different techniques. We used a lot of techniques for figuring out where the inside and the outside of a loop has to be from something like a cave puzzle. We also used a lot of the patterns that we saw in the Slitherlink puzzle. By putting those two together, we could see how to solve this, even if at first it looks very daunting. I hope you learned something new about solving loop-based logic puzzles today. And I think that I'll do one more video on loop puzzles on a very advanced technique, and then I'll move on to a different type of logic puzzle. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, or following me on Twitter, at FlebPuzzles. Thank you once again, everyone, and as always, happy puzzling!